Alright guys, the water's up. So, welcome back to another YouTube video. This is the Q&A with Dar. Dar, say hi. Hi. Um, you all know Dar by now, so I don't need to do any introduction. Questions off he on yeah, um, Instagram. I actually could have got a few on YouTube, but I never checked. I'll check the comments kind of halfway through. But I'm going to run through them. Pretty straightforward questions, a few about training, a few about kind of what we're going to do in the future, and then a lot of stuff about Manchester and the move to Manchester. So I actually haven't seen any of these questions. As yeah, well. he has, I literally just skimmed over them there this morning. So yeah. First of all, I'm going to crack open the cold yeah. one. Yeah. We go together. Yeah. Do you want to join Whoa! <laughs> 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 Max Cherry because I drank my monster this morning already at like halfway. I was asleep at halfway, so mm. didn't drink my monster then. I'm gonna try to get these like to have some sort of order to them and not just be going from like Manchester question to training question. I want to more like you know kind of build it up so that it makes a bit more sense. Why Manchester? Sick, isn't it? It was sick, it is sick, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it just made the most sense. Um, I wasn't really willing to have to go too far away from home right now. I already have done my Australia trip in the past and things like that. And just kind of where I'm at in life in terms of coaching and bodybuilding, it just made the most sense. Um, who I'm with, who I'm surrounded by, there's a nice kind of group over here. Obviously Ross is here with Grace, they kind of started it. Then you know Ryan is here, Norna, a couple of others. So yeah, just made the most sense to come over here. Um, I've been back and forth as well like four or five times in the last few months. And the second I arrived here, I it reminded me of Galway, that's the best way I put it, I just felt at home, it was nice, it was cool, it was a nice city. Um, I almost knew where everything was before, I even knew where everything was, if that makes sense, I know it sounds stupid, but it's very... It is a very compact, easy to get around Very livable, yeah. To be yeah. fair, yeah. Um, and yeah, it just made more sense, everyone was going, not everyone was there, but not there, Ryan. Yeah, that was a deciding factor for me as well, because I had originally intended to go to Sheffield, because I wanted to go back to train out at Ultraflex Rotherham, but like... I would have been on my own there, you know, just in like a one bedroom apartment in Sheffield, which isn't, you know, the nicest city in the UK. So um, I just kind of decided, look, I'm just going to go here. There's a better like community of us here. Um, and I'm kind of glad I made that decision now that I am over here and I'm, I'm settled because having people around you makes a massive yeah, difference, yeah. you know. Because I remember you were set, settled on Sheffield or you were thinking of going there and then we were just like, why well, not just come to Manchester? And then you just had, like, had like an epiphany. Like, yeah. the, the week before, I was supposed to come over and do viewings for like single belts. He was like, no, do a viewing for a double. And then the first one we see, we just took it straight away. When did you decide that you were moving? So I had kind of put the wheels in motion or kind of in my own head. Probably back around my trip to Manchester. That, that was like around the time of the Arnolds. Um, so I was like, yeah, Manchester's cool. What am I moving there? And then I remember I met up with Ryan, he was actually on prep at the time, he came down to Nina, and he was like, yeah, me and Lorna are going to go, and then I was like, yeah, right, I'm going I'm to do it, I'm going to do it, and then, nothing really happened, like, you know, I was kind of just saying in my head, I'll do it, I'll be there by the summer, I'll be there by the summer, and then I was just chatting to Ross one day, and he was like, right, come over here for the weekend, and just get yourself sorted, and try to get a few viewings, and then, that was from, that was the start of March, and then we were here, first of May, um, so, yeah. you know, it was a quick enough turnaround with things. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. For me, like, I, I had always intended to come back over. Like, I always wanted to, like, move away anyway. But when I came over here last year, while Ireland was still in lockdown, and I trained here for three weeks, just seeing how the body moved and, like, a vibe was, like, over here, I was like, I definitely need to move back. Um, but, like, at that current moment in time, like, <clears throat> just after leaving my full-time job, didn't have that much money, didn't have the savings behind me, didn't have my business built up. So I knew I just needed to pay my dues, stay a little bit patient, just kind of slog away for the year until I kind of had myself in a position that I could move over and stars just kind of aligned I suppose in a way that did myself keen both kind of coming to the same situation in life at the same time so it was nice from that perspective. Yeah, yeah I think like we're very much similar, both very much in the same kind of, like although you're much further ahead of me in terms of bodybuilding, in terms of coaching we're very much at the same point where we needed to leave and kind of go and, and, and learn more and be more. I don't mind answering this. How much is the cost of rent an apartment like that, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, it's £1,400 a month. So £700 so each. £700 each. Now, we do have to pay like our electricity as well. We do also have to pay council tax. The council tax is like £1,855, I think, for the year. So like that's an extra like nine hundred and something pounds each. So like that's an extra like seventy five ish pounds a month. I think you know that's just quick math. But like when you actually add it all up, I'd say you're probably looking at like 
maybe a thousand euro a month probably just to live here you know yeah because yeah. but look like it's it's definitely worth it like the apartment complex for living is I sick is and i think the biggest thing for me is probably just the accessibility living here like the gym is really close to us like and is right, right there right there like oh, even the piccadilly train station is right outside the window here so i don't even think it's a 10 minute walk to that train station so straight to the train station to the airport in like 20 minutes home like it's just it's very easy to get around it reminds me when i was living in Trinidad, i was living like in the middle of the city and like i feel like what well, city Trinidad city but like <laughs> I was, I'm, like i'm really like close to everton here and i really like that because i hate like having to travel everywhere and things been far away from me it's just so inconvenient and waste so much time in your day so yeah that's probably the best thing is the location i feel yeah yeah couldn't be better literally and everyone is around obviously ryan is in the same building we're awesome grace to live two minutes that way and the gym is out our window we can literally see it right now as i'm speaking to you and then 10 minutes to the city center yeah. if we want yeah and we're also on like i'd say the quiet side of the city as well like we're a bit out so, so it's nice aldi right across the road if you need to get anything from the shop so perfect obviously um, how long are you planning on staying in England? I'd uh, say about two years, man. Like my kind of primary goal is like my next competition season, which is going to be like next September, October. So like that will see us up to eighteen months here, and like I would imagine like straight away after that, I'm not just going to like make a mad yeah. drastic move, you know. So probably be here the Christmas after that. I would imagine around two years, and then I kind of see where I'm at in life and business and bodybuilding. And then, Place. Yeah, we said 18 months, didn't we? Yeah. Um, obviously, we're both competing next year, and then from there, I imagine it was two years, but maybe something more exotic for, for yeah. a while. And yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. actually <laughs> Dubai or something, but it's so hard to tell because so much has changed for me even in the last year. Man, like, you like, just don't know what's 18 months ago, I didn't think I was going to be here. I had a very chance yeah. to be in back in Australia, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's completely different. You, you, can't really, you can't really tell. But, favorite thing about Manchester so far? Um, again, I think it's just the accessibility yeah. of everything. So close. Obviously, the gym is so close, and um, everyone around us like we have a bit of a community. So we're going over to Ross and Grace's house later on for a barbecue. So just and nice. as well, like, and this is why I was saying to the lads, like it's very, like, it's a very clean city. Like there's, I haven't seen much like scumbags or homeless people or anything like that around so far. I feel like that's because we're in a nicer part of the area. But even when I went to the city, I don't really see too much of it. Like if you're walking through Dublin City or even Cork yeah, City yeah. these days. There's just scumbags everywhere, and it's just like horrible. But it's not really like that here to the same extent, so that's nice. And all the junkies are actually like dead sound. <laughs> they actually <laughs> are. Like they're, they're all on spice, like so. Mm. It's not, they're not actually like just zombies back out their head. They're like having fun, laughing, jumping around the place. So kind of adds a bit to it. But there's not, not even that many of them in the past, like to Dublin or, or anywhere like that, or even Limerick. This one is from from Chloe. Worst and best thing about moving in together? <laughs> you answered that first. <laughs> Me? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm very tough to live up. I live like, <laughs> um, that straight away. Best thing is just chatting on, on a day to day basis because we're actually very, very similar. And I think even like you're a few years older than me, whatever, but we both have similar stories from back home. I feel that we were both the same kind of person when we were in our teenage years or in teenage years and college yeah, years. Yeah. Very, very similar, yeah. even more similar than I thought originally. Um, and then obviously just, you know, just being able to help me, wouldn't be help you with just business and coaching and just chatting about that on a daily basis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Worst thing, do you want to go best? Do you want to go yeah, best? we can bounce off each other quite well. Like I feel like we've both kind of maybe had similar journeys up to this point and want to have similar journeys beyond this point. So I feel like it is a very like synergistic relationship in that way and like especially as well being around Ryan and stuff everyone kind of keeps each other accountable even for like YouTube content for like all those other sort of things I was saying to Kim we moved in we need to like keep on it with that sort of stuff that's why I have no problem sitting down here recording this video you know if I need to give Kim camera to record clips of me like he can do that so I feel like that helps because like very hard to do that back home when you're like on your own or you're like in your home gym where everyone's like what is he doing over there um, so yeah that's probably like the best thing um, I do Kim go with the, with the worst thing there to be fair, like I thought it was good. You were going to be a lot more like, yeah, yeah. on edge. Not on edge, but like, because I'm relatively clean, but you are cleaner. Yeah, but yeah. like I don't think I'm bad. Like, yeah, no, you're not bad. You're not bad. To be fair, and that was like only thing that I really like, really care about. Like, it's just like the cleanliness of the place and stuff yeah. like that. But like, I was even, I was even actually saying it to, to Chloe last night that like you've been very good to live with so far, even from 
like respecting each other's like time and space and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like I don't think Keen is very like noisy or disruptive or like any of those sort of things. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's just like I was gonna say yeah, the worst thing is like not being able to like sing at the top of my lungs at nine o'clock in my head. Because <laughs> <laughs> <I'm laughs> <definitely Yeah>. <laughs> normally I'm out singing fucking Christy Moore or something back home, but I'm like, oh there's the sleeping heavy singing. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. Yeah. I've noticed that you have been quite to be fair. <laughs> yeah, I have noticed that so um, yeah, I, really, like, I, I get a FaceTime call and just take it downstairs and I take it upstairs because I know that he, tried, he struggles with sleep as it is, so I'm not going to be speaking too loud. This one is from Grace, and I know it's a bit of a piss take. She goes, How does the yogurt over here compare to the yogurt, Nina? So, backstory <laughs> basically, I was staying in Ross and Grace's house, and they found it hilarious that I could not go to bed without my yogurt bowl that night. But I just, I just like it. It says the stomach gets you ready for bed, prepares me, so every single night before bed, I have a yogurt bowl. And in all honesty, it's actually not as good, but I think it's because I normally have the Liberty one back home. Yeah. That one, and now I've been having the, the Aldi one, which it's grand, it's alright. The Aldi one is wank, man. Yeah, Even the Aldi one back home is just not good. Whatever is like something out of farm, I don't know. So in all seriousness, it's actually not as good, but wait until I find a good, a good yogurt spot. Ross, do you miss Tipper Immer Alva? So the reason he's saying that is because Ross can never remember where I'm from. He either thinks I'm from Limerick or Galway, and he always forgets that I'm from Tipperary. Um, but in all seriousness, do, do you miss home? No. No, I know, it sounds harsh, I actually don't. No. I miss my dog, yeah. to be honest. And obviously, you know, family and that, but I haven't been long enough to actually miss them. Yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm very bad for like, like, the time that I did spend at home over the last like 18 months or so. I got on a lot better than I thought I actually would, because like, I'm someone who's always kind of lived away from home really since I've been like 18. And uh, love my freedom, love my own space, like love not having like just people asking me a lot of questions and stuff. But um, I got on very well the last eighteen months when I was at home, and like I was worried when I came over here. I was like, "Jeez, would I miss everyone now?" And like, as harsh as it sounds, I actually don't. But like, I just get on very well when I'm off and away in my own. I find it very hard to like keep in contact with people as well. Not because like I don't want to, but because I'm just like I don't, I don't think of it. Like, I think with our jobs, we're very isolated anyway. Like, you know what I mean? I spend all day back home on our laptops and we're spending all day here instead. It's kind of the same thing. Um, and with social media, you kind of feel like you're just connected to everyone all the time rather than, you know, missing out on anything. Who's more of a neat freak? Me. Yeah, I think you can give me that one. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> this is a bit of a random one. Biggest turn off in women? Well, there's so many icks. You know, I'd always like randomly like, think of an ick. And like, then when somebody asks me, like, oh, what's like one of your icks? I can never think about it. I should make it, yeah. I should make it like a note. I'd be sitting there, like, sometimes like making my dinner, cooking my vegetables. I'm like, oh, yeah. it's such an ick of girls don't eat vegetables. Yeah, yeah, and then I'm like, I'd always forget what, what an ick is. Or I hate, like, um, oh, like, obviously the obvious ones are like, arrogance yeah, and things yeah. like that. But, um, I just hate when people like, just like, don't look after themselves. Yeah. You know, like, that's. Have no like, not like respect for themselves. They just don't take care of themselves. Like, you know, they don't eat right. They don't exercise. You know, they don't want to like work or anything like that. Yeah. Like, that's just, that's just yeah. Like, I think when they have no like drive, mm -hmm. like when the girls only like say, um, what the word I'm for? Like the, the only thing about them is that they go out the weekend. They don't have anything else about them. Like there's that girl that's mm -hmm. going out. Like that's kind of a bit of a turn off. Like I like a girl that does something with themselves and. I know Dusty Ashley was either. She was actually good. <laughs> yeah. In from Ryan, so big legs or big arms? Legs. This is a tough one for me because like, mm -hmm. I have an obsession with just having bigger arms because my arms are probably the weakest part of my body. But then I feel like I've had big arms and small legs. I think the opposite. So yeah, I have to say, I have to say big legs. Because come on, like, legs are such a bigger body part. Yeah. Literally half your body, your arms are just like, and I feel like as well, when you're on stage, the arms are probably going to be the last place that like the judges look. Yeah, 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 yeah. They want to look at everywhere else first. I would, I would imagine. You know, big arms are impressive. Like you look at Nick Walker, and you're like, what the fuck? But at the same time, I just, I don't think it's like the winning factor. To be honest. Yeah, like it, it's a tough one because like if it wasn't to do with bodybuilding and you're just an average person who's probably going to wear pants for the majority of the year, you might just say arms. But then again, when it is summer time, it's having fucking big ass legs. It's pretty sick. Yeah. Competing goals in 2023. So you can go first. So I just want to win both my classes. So that's going to be beginners at two bro and novice at two bros. So I'm going to do a regional show like four weeks before the Arnolds and then I'm going to do the Arnolds. 
like I imagine the standard at the Irons would be quite high so at the regional show my goal is definitely to become a first place in both of those categories and hopefully I would really like a decent placing in like a heavyweight category like I'm only talking about top six like if I got like top six first call outs I'd be happy with that because I know like in the heavyweight class obviously you're just going into open bodybuilding yeah, yeah. and then it's serious business like especially that exact regional which is going to be four weeks before the Ironman it's going to be like a warm up show for people who are doing the Irons, which is a pro qualifier so I imagine the standard is, is going to be pretty high as it was last year at the show because I was actually at that show um, so yeah I just want to make sure just do the best I possibly can in those two classes and then I'm just going to see from see from there Obviously, I'd love to win the novice the Irons as well, but that'd be doing well. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, really, I think it's just the stage experience. That's just the most important thing for me. Um, just getting up there, getting on the stage, um, getting a proper taste for it, like a proper prep. Like, before she prep, but it's just not the same thing. We actually had a conversation you know, the other day. It, it's a walk yeah. in the park in comparison. So, just the stage experience, um, and then I think, you know, I'm not going with any high expectations. Um, obviously, I'd like to place somewhere high, but again, you know, I'm well aware of kind of the muscle mass I have and the muscle mass that I need. Um, but just to get up there, um, still young, you know, and it's to take a year, two years off and go again. So yeah, exactly. The most important thing is just the experience, because one thing that I do struggle with is like associate myself as the bodybuilder, just because I haven't done it yet. I haven't actually walked the walk. I do the other shit, like the off season shit or whatever, and. You know, I can diet when I need to diet, but I haven't gone on the stage. And that's mm-hmm. just what I, I need to do. I need to take that off in my own head to keep pushing in for me for years. Exactly. And plans for the future for the Bovi? Again, it's one of those like yeah, it's, it's one of those tough questions to answer because I'm the sort of person as well where I feel like I'm probably looking into the future too much. I've ever like mapped out this age I'm gonna do this and then in two years I'm gonna be here and I'm gonna be there and whatever. I feel like I need to just live in the moment and just focus on what I'm doing in the medium term a little bit more because like all the plans I ever made for myself, like none of them have happened. And something different <laughs> something different has ended up happening. And something better has ended up happening. And I am a believer that everything does kind of happen in the reason for a reason and it kind of pans out the way that it's supposed to pan out. So I'm not gonna say anything specific because I know it probably won't happen. You know what I mean? So yeah. just gonna try and focus on like where I want to be in, in the future. Like I have a rough vague idea. Yeah, like yeah. I know where I want to be in bodybuilding, I know where I want to be in business. I know I want to be happy doing those things, so wherever that takes me, I'm just gonna see how it all pans out. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. True. Yeah, I'm kind of the same. Like I just kind of have the next 18 months in my head. Yeah, because that's where I see myself 100 being here and you know being on stage, all that kind of crap. And then from there, I really don't know. I would like to spend a bit of time abroad as well. I don't want, I don't want to travel, but again, it's kind of like bodybuilding and proper travel don't go hand in hand. So yeah. you kind of have to see see which one you, you pick. Um, and then obviously I have other goals like you know I'd like to have property and shit but that's, that's down the line so um, yeah you know, there's, there's loads coming up but again I don't want to like say anything because I didn't think I was going to be here yeah. six months ago so you know who knows where I'll be in six months time but as long as I'm a, a better version of myself then happy days Thoughts on the whole toxic positivity trend that has surfaced recently? No, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> am, I go, am I going to go in here? Am I going? Yeah, yeah, go yeah no, I just hate that whole toxic positivity thing. Like, well, I think, like, I, I hate toxic positivity, but I think, like, backlash against toxic positivity is probably a good thing. I think all these toxic anything things are just, like, toxic. bad, bad, bad terms. They are toxic. Like, yeah, the yeah. irony in those yeah. actual things. Like, toxic positivity for anyone who, like, doesn't know it's just like you know people are just like oh no like just good vibes only good vibes only and they're just good vibed out of their heads and they just don't spend any time maybe to actually sit with their negative emotions and process them properly and like try to you know move forward from there like you're not always going to be positive all the time and you can't always be positive all the time and i think it's wrong to tell people they should always just look at the positives and things and be happy and this and that. And it's, life is just not like that. You know it, I mean? it doesn't balance out. Like mm. With positives, there are always negatives. And if you were always just bringing the positives, which is great, you know, you should be a positive person, but not, I suppose, noticing and understanding that there are negatives, then you're only accepting 50% of everything, or you know, or whatever. You're not accepting the, 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 the bigger picture. Um, and with it being online as well, like it's especially in coaching and shit, like, it, they're kind of this virtue signaling when they're, yeah. when they're saying that man like they're a lot of these people that are toxic positivity people they're the same people who when they're off the camera they're not yeah a bit like so 
just be a bit more, I suppose, clued in as to who you're listening to. Um, yeah, I thought I could go way deeper on that. Yeah. Just leave it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just, <laughs> I just leave it there. There's another one that you can probably go in on. Thoughts of unqualified people prescribing protocols. To give yeah. an example, but I don't want to read it out. Oh, God, yeah. Um, yeah, I, like, look, right, like, everyone's going to have their own opinions and everyone's going to have, like, their own experience and stuff. Like, even for me, right, like, I don't have any qualifications to be an online coach, right? Like, I don't have a personal training qualification. I don't have any of those things. But what I do have is, like, experience in, like, doing a lot of stuff, you know what I mean? Like, I have gotten in shape before. I have built muscle before. I have got shredded before. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've you know, tried a lot of different training approaches and stuff like that. But like some protocols that people are prescribing, whether it be like for drugs or whether it be like for food or anything else, like, I don't know, it, you have to just be very, very careful. Um, because obviously even for that question there, like that's a very like dangerous. There, there, there's a fine line, you know, like between giving your recommendations or talking about your experience and, or, and then telling people what to do, you know what I mean? And with, with things that, you should be qualified to or topics that you should be qualified on and you should be going to see a specialist in mm-hmm. you know you talking about it on your story when you're unqualified to people who yeah. also are unqualified and also struggle with that is no better than two alcoholics sitting at a bar talking about their drink problems it's kind of one of the biggest problems though with the like new age of like working and industry in general because obviously a lot of things are like online now and a lot of people can just make money doing like really obscure things like from their laptops and stuff like that and like everything is changing at such a fast pace like how do you regulate anything you know what i mean so like the online coaching industry like is completely unregulated but there's a new person on instagram popping popping up every second week who's an online coach you know what i mean so like you, you can't regulate that it probably should be regulated like I believe you should have to probably go to college to get a degree to be an online yeah. coach and it should be you know there should be some sort of governing body but when is that going to happen if even I think it just comes down to the individual themselves and like this is what I say as well because obviously I'm unqualified you know but like if somebody doesn't want to pay me the money for me to help them they don't have to do that you know what I mean but people do pay me the money because maybe they follow me maybe they you know, think I know what to talk about maybe they trust me yeah. So like, just make sure you do the research into someone before yeah. they go giving you fucking protocols. And that's the problem as well with the coaching industry is that people just think results immediately cor- correlate to like somebody knowing what they're talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. And even like, not got to do with say protocols on, on topics, but even just like with getting in shape, like it's the same goes for like people who just buy into how a coach looks and then they think, okay, this you know girls in shape or this lads in shape, they have a six pack, she's a, a fat ass, they can do that for me when maybe you should be looking at their coach, you know, and that's why the person will give it to them. Or look at their clients' results, but don't just buy into what you see straight away. Especially the fitness influencers. Yeah. Because you're just taking like a really, really tiny like substrata of the population who are just like elitely genetically gifted you know what I mean like you look at these fitness influencers with hundreds of thousands of followers like why doesn't everyone look like that and have hundreds of thousands of followers because it's like they're just not in that very small percentage of people so like just because that girl can eat whatever she wants and she has a big fucking booty and all this other sort of stuff does not mean you need to be listening to exercise advice from her she probably doesn't know what she's talking about she's probably trying to send you a booty band so yeah she just just blessed with a bit of fat ass god damn that's a big fat ass is a photo shoot prep just a prolonged general cut, or am I completely wrong? Um, I would say you have to be kind of careful with the way you word it, because I could just say that a competition prep is just a prolonged general cut, yeah. or any diet is just a prolonged general cut. So, no, not really. There is there is a difference, um, and unless you can execute and complete a general cut well um, and reverse out of it well, then you have no business going to do a photo shoot prep. And the answer is always it depends as well. Yeah, like, yeah. Something that like I have a slight bit of an issue with. It's just a pet peeve really. Is like people say, "Oh, I'm on prep or whatever week of prep or whatever," and they're doing a photo shoot prep. The photo shoot prep and the competition prep are very, very fucking different. And the level of leanness you're going to need to achieve for a competition prep in comparison to a photo shoot prep is going to be very different as well. So like everyone's saying they're on prep, like there's a distinction. Like say you're on photo shoot prep, yeah. or like I'm seeing people as well doing like really short preps these days. Like, you know, like a fucking seven week photo shoot prep. And I'm like, that is not a fucking prep. That is just a mini cut. You know what I mean? Like, don't be complaining that much because, like, 
fuck me it only starts getting hard after about 10 weeks so like you know what I mean yeah, like yeah. come on uh, yeah um, so yeah I'd say I'd say you're right and you're wrong because it just depends kind of what way you word it or what way you look at it I think this is the last one um, thought a, a deep one mm. thoughts on recent deaths in bodybuilding oh god I feel like I've answered this so much go on you go there <laughs> oh god I'll probably leave it for you because you've answered it so many times um, <laughs> I think you kind of know what you, you're getting yourself in for, um, you kind of accept it, um, but also you understand that the people who, who are dying these days are people who are you know, a, f- a fair bit older and they've probably been around and using protocols that were less safer um, to say and I think the industry has gone so much that I do feel as though we've kind of gone past it and not just gone past it, I think maybe or circle anyway, or people that we follow, who, who I don't want to say we're, we're doing it right, but yeah. there, there still is that there's room for improvement. Yeah, there's still room for improvement, but there is also still that group of people who are doing it wrong, I don't know, let's say, for whatever, you know what I mean? There is, and there always will be, um, but the majority of people who are who are you know, dying and all the kind of crack are people who have probably pushed it very, very hard, yeah. you know, they're. And look, when like thirty years older, and they've, they've, they've done all the, the wrong things. Okay, so it is it is bodybuilding at the end of the day, and there is going to be periods where, like, if you do have big goals, you're going to have to push a little bit harder. But whilst you need to know when to push, you need to know when to pull back as well. You know, particularly yeah. a lot of these guys who are dying; they're in their mid forties and they're still like two hundred eight pounds. You know what I mean? And I'm it's like, not healthy to walk around that body. You know, right? even even if you don't have muscle, like if you're two hundred eight pounds of just fat and you're walking around in your in your forties or fifties like you could fucking die of a heart attack, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like it's not healthy for your body to be carrying that weight regardless of whether it's muscle or whether it's body fat or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's terrible but it just is what it is, it's what's one of them things. And it's one of the things that as you said in your story last night, you know, majority of people everyone knows it happens but they just don't talk about it. You know? But look like People people die all the time in other sports and in other disciplines. I mean, like Formula One drivers die all the time, and even like more Formula One drivers died twenty years ago than they do now because obviously they've made advancements in the safety of the car and stuff like that. But that doesn't mean that people still don't die. Like a Formula Two driver like died last year. Mm. You know what I mean? So like, there's always going to be improvements to make things safer as time goes coming on. But you know, every sport has its dangers. You know? yeah. I'm sure, an American football player still. You know, sure. Yeah. Fucking paradise. Yeah, and all the concussions and all the like. Yeah. What, what was that movie? Was it with Will Smith? Did you watch? Is it called concussion? I don't know. It's it's called concussion. Yeah, it's very good. You watch it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything. Um, ended on a bit of a, a deeper one there. Oh yeah. Um, can't think of, of you know. I've answered them all. So trying to look for like a light-hearted one, but there wasn't one there. Unless you have anything to say to, to no. brighten up the mood. No, 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 no. 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 Darren no. likes deep fucking. I do, yeah. yeah. I like deep shit. Like yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. I feel like it just doesn't bother me as much <laughs> as maybe it might with yeah, other people. I just could have went to my bedroom and I'll cry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's been that. Um, I say it's long enough. Um, as always, guys, please like, subscribe, comment, all that YouTuber shit. Next video will either be training footage or a full day of eating. Because I haven't done either of them in a while. Um, subscribe to Dara if you're not. And yeah, see you next time. Peace. Peace.